Now that we know we can reduce a very large angle into an acute angle, let us take a look at how this affects our trigonometric ratios. Okay, now of course the assumption here is that you are familiar with the three basic trigo ratio. And there's the sine, cosine, and tangent. Alright, so let us say that we have an angle, an acute angle of 45 degrees. Okay, and therefore this point here will have to be 1, 1. Alright, because it must be the diagonal of a square. So that will give us this length here to be 1 and this height here to be 1. Okay, so this is a right angle triangle. And of course all of you should know that this length here is uh, square root 2 because of the Pythagoras theorem. So let us just use sine for example. Now let's say I want to sine 45 degrees. Okay, now it will be very, very easy for you to tackle this, isn't it? I mean, sine 45 will be opposite side over the hypotenuse side. And therefore, it will be 1 over square root 2. Okay, so this is our sine 45 degrees. No problem with that, yes. Okay, now let us now take a look at, well, maybe I want to sine 135 degrees. Alright, so just what, where is 135 degrees? So we know from... Uh, the, the fact that 135 degrees is an obtuse angle, so it will be in the second quadrant. So let us just draw briefly, okay, um, how our 135 degrees will look like. So this is our 135 degrees, okay, and of course, you ought to know that if this is 135 degrees, and this angle here will have to be 45 degrees as well. And thus, this point here will be negative 1, positive 1, y. Okay, negative 1, x, and positive 1, y. Of course, these are the x, y axis. You should know that. Okay, so now let us... Um, okay, so this length here, this x value here will be negative 1. This will be positive 1. And again, the diagonal of the square will give us the square root 2, which is the hypotenuse side of this right angle triangle. So we need to know that 135 degrees is actually represented by this acute angle called 45 degrees in the second quadrant. So what we want to do when we say we want to sign 135 degrees is the same as to say we want to sign this 45 degrees in the second quadrant. Alright? So what it means is to sign 45 degrees in the second quadrant. So to sign 45 degrees in the second quadrant, how would it look like? So this is the angle in question here. So to sign this angle, it will be opposite side, which is again 1, over the hypotenuse side, which is again square root 2. So we start to realize that, hey, sign 45 degrees in the first quadrant and sine 135 degrees in the second quadrant is the same. Okay, now let us investigate further. Okay, um, now let's say now we are interested to find out the sine of um, 225 degrees. Okay, so let us uh, first figure this out, where is 225 degrees? So 225 degrees is obviously more than 180 degrees, so it will be 45 degrees more than 180 degrees. So it will look a little like this. Alright, represented by this line here, and of course by this little angle here. Okay, so we know that the angle of 225, alright, will be represented by this 45 degrees in the third quadrant. Alright, and again, this point here, alright, will then be negative 1, negative 1. And what this means is now this vertical height, okay, now will be, rep will be represented by negative 1, because of the negative 1, y. And of course, the hypotenuse is still square root 2. Alright, so far so good. Okay, so now we know that if we want to sign 225 degrees, which happens to be in the third quadrant, represented by 45 degrees, it is the same to say that, you know, we want to sign the acute angle of 45 degrees in the third quadrant. 
Alright, so we will try to find out what exactly is this. So sine 45 degrees in the third quadrant will be sine uh, this angle here. Again, the opposite side, which is now negative 1. Okay, and the hypotenuse, which is still square root 2. So this will give us an answer of negative 1 over square root 2. Okay? So we start to realize something rather interesting, isn't it? You know, we keep on getting 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2, but something is happening here. Uh, when the angle reaches the third quadrant, okay, we will have a negative answer. Alright, let's move on, okay, to investigate further um, the last quadrant. Now, let's say we will now we want to sign um, 315 degrees. Okay, now of course we must know that 315 degrees is actually just 45 degrees short of 360 degrees. So we know that the angle will look a little like this, all the way, all the way to here, in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so then this angle here, that is representing this 315 degrees, again will be an acute angle of 45 degrees. And of course, that being said and done, that means to say this point here will now be negative, uh, positive 1x and negative 1y. Okay, 1, negative 1. Alright, and that means to say that this height here, this vertical length here, will be represented by negative 1y. And again, um, the hypotenuse will remain the same. Okay, square root 2. Okay, and of course this time round, the x value will be a positive x value. So we know that the sine 315 degrees, it's the same as to say that we want to sine 45 degrees in the fourth quadrant. Alright, so let's just try to, you know, figure this out. What exactly is this sine 45 degrees in the fourth quadrant? So sine 45 degrees in the fourth quadrant will be, of course, again, the same thing. The opposite side over the hypotenuse side, which is negative 1 over square root 2. Alright, so we start to realize something rather interesting here, isn't it? We start to realize that if we were to sign 45 degrees in the first quadrant, we will have a positive answer. And if we were to sign 45 degrees in the second quadrant, we will get a positive value as well. But if the moment we reach the third quadrant, we will have a negative answer. Fourth quadrant too will become a negative answer. Alright? Now, let us investigate the other cos uh, a trigo ratio, let's say cosine, okay? So we, we, we have the same thing, okay, to be fair, all right, we have a 45 degrees acute angle here in the first quadrant. So this point will naturally be 1, 1, and of course, as we mentioned later on, this will be 1, 1, the square root 2, okay? So now let's say we want to cosine 45 degrees in the first quadrant. Okay, everything looks neat and easy. Uh, it'll be adjacent side, which would be 1, and uh, over the hypotenuse side, which would be square root 2. So we will have 1 over square root 2 positive. Now let's say, now we want to cosine 135 degrees. Okay, which we then know 135 degrees will have to be somewhere here in the second quadrant. Okay, so in the second quadrant, 135 degrees, and this point here will again be our negative 1, positive 1y. One okay, and 135 degrees will be represented by this 45 degrees in the second quadrant. So when we say we want to cosine 135 degrees, it means to say that well, we want to cosine 45 degrees in the second quadrant. Alright, and of course, this will mean that this x value here is negative 1, this is positive 1, and this is again positive root 2. The hypotenuse side is always positive because the length will not change with the x and the y. Alright, um, the sign of the length which is square root 2 because it will be um, negative 1 square plus 1 square square root. Okay, so the cosine 45 degrees in the second quadrant will look a little like this, isn't it? Adjacent side, which is negative 1, over the hypotenuse side, which is square root 2. So this will give us negative 1 over square root 2. Now, we move on now to cosine 225 degrees. So to cosine 225 degrees, we know pr from previous uh, 
uh, experience that 225 degrees will be the same as 45 degrees in the third quadrant. And thus, we know that this point will be uh, negative 1, negative 1. So you will make our y a negative 1 value and the x a negative 1 value and the hypotenuse is still square root 2. So the cosine 225 degrees, 225 degrees is the same to say that we want to cosine 45 degrees in the third quadrant. Okay, and of course, let us try to figure out what exactly happens here. It will be adjacent side, which is again negative 1, and over the hypotenuse side, which is square root 2. So it will be negative 1 over square root 2. Alright, now let's say now, finally, okay, we want to cosine 315 degrees. Okay, we know that, well, 315 degrees will look a little like this. It is actually the same as to say we want to cosine the 45 degrees acute angle in the fourth quadrant. Alright, and let us go investigate what is cosine 45 degrees in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so we know that this point here will be 1, negative 1. And that will make a y value, a negative y value. Uh, hypotenuse is still square root 2. The x will be positive 1. So adjacent side, which is 1, over the hypotenuse side, which is square root 2. So this will give us a positive Square, uh, 1 over square root 2. So we then realize again, similarly to our uh, sine ratio, we start to realize that, hey, you know, what actually changes here is actually only the sine. Okay, the sign of our trigger, uh, our answer, whether we will get a positive answer or negative answer or so on and so forth. Now, what we have gathered so far is that when we have a sign, a trigger ratio of a sign in the first quadrant, okay, we will get a positive answer. Okay, and when we have a sign in the second quadrant, we will also have a positive answer. But the moment we reach the third quadrant, we realize that our sign ratio becomes a negative answer. And the same thing happens when we have uh, reached the fourth quadrant. We have also a negative answer. Now, when we were dealing with um, the cosine ratio uh, uh, earlier on, we realized that cosine in the first quadrant will also be positive, but the cosine ratio in the second quadrant will then be negative. Cosine ratio in the third quadrant will also be negative, but the cosine in the fourth quadrant will then be a positive answer. Now you can go on and try to investigate on your own, but you will realize that tangent will be also positive in the first quadrant, tangent will be negative in the second quadrant, but tangent will be positive in the third quadrant, but tangent will then be again negative in the fourth quadrant. Now you can try it on your own, um, based on what we have done earlier on for sine and cosine, using the same way, drawing the same triangles, uh, go on and try to figure out for tangent. You'll realize that the result is basically what I just show you here. Now, this table then now summarizes uh, what we have found out so far. Okay, what we have found out so far is that in the first quadrant, all the trigger ratios, okay, all the basic trigger ratios, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, all will be positive as long as it's done in the first quadrant. Well, in the second quadrant, only the sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tangent is positive and the rest else all negative. Okay, for the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive and everything else will be negative also. Alright, now some people find this very difficult to remember. How am I going to remember, you know, all positive, sign positive? Okay, now there is a, a, a way that you can try to remember using um, the letters here. Now you can try to remember it this way. The A stands for all, S stands for science, T stands for teacher, and C stands for crazy. So it will be, I think, rather easy for you to remember that all science teachers crazy. Okay, just don't tell your science teacher I told you so. Alright, um, now there are of course uh, some other ways you can try to remember that. Okay, um, one of the other ways would be C-A-S-T, cast, uh, which I find, well, maybe not that useful because um, this is actually the first quadrant you should start for with A and not C.
right? There's some students who then start to realize that this is the first quadrant or this is the first quadrant and then, um, you know, get all confused and all. So I think, and uh, so far, all my students find this very rather amusing. At the same time, uh, one of the easiest for them to remember that all science teacher crazy. I mean, not all science teacher crazy, but to remember that all are positive here. Sine is positive here. Tangent is positive here. Cosine is positive here. Alright?